Welcome back, I'm Shane and this is Relative Time. Today we are going to take a look at another 5 great watches to start or feed your watch collecting obsession. And this is part 2 of the series. If you missed part 1, there will be a link down below in the description. In that video I go into more detail about what's required to be included in these lists. But basically there are 3 criteria. The first is that it has to be relatively affordable, the second is that they are easily available, and the third is that there is something interesting or unique about each watch, just so that they won't easily be replaced and can stand on their own as your collection grows. Now let's start things off with one of the most affordable automatic GMTs out there, which is the Vostok Komandirsky GMT. Automatic GMTs, for the most part, aren't cheap by any means, as they usually start around five to six hundred bucks and go up from there. But there are a few exceptions, and Vostok is one of them. Now, to be fair, these Vostok GMTs are what I refer to as a classic or an original GMT, as the hour and GMT hands are directly linked to each other, and you can't independently adjust either. So, in order to read a second time zone, you have to use the bezel, which is exactly how the very first GMTs ever operated. So, they aren't as convenient as some of the more modern GMT movements, but if you've never had a GMT and you're just curious about it, these can be a very cost effective way to try one out. Now, out of all the Vostok GMTs I've looked at, the Komandirsky GMT was the first and the most affordable, as they run between 70 to 90 bucks, and they're probably the most straightforward out of the bunch as it has more of a field watch styling, hence that Komandirsky name. With the Arabic indicators and the small seconds, it's kind of like a Russian GMT Dirty Dozen. Yet even though it's a common Deerski, this thing is built more like an amphibia diver, with a similar case, domed polymer crystal, and 200 meters of water resistance. So it's sort of a dive field watch hybrid, and it's one that's ready for just about anything you could throw at it. Which I think makes this one of the best budget travel watches out there, and especially so for more adventurous journeys, as well as just a great beater watch if you eventually get a nicer GMT. It's tough, reliable, and with a simple straightforward design that should go with lots of straps and situations. Plus, on the off chance something happens to this as you're off on a journey, it's not going to be too expensive to replace. Up next, we have one of the more unusual field watches out there with the Orient Defender. And I think this goes for both the original and the new Defender too. In some ways I like the design of the original better, but I think the upgraded newer movement in the Defender 2 makes it the better choice. The Defender is a moderately sized 42mm field watch, and one with a very straightforward entirely brushed case, which is one reason that it has a lot in common with Seiko's own SNZG field watches. Although what really sets the Defender apart, not just from Seiko but almost every other field watch out there, is its use of a multifunction movement which includes both a 24 hour and a day of the week subdial. Now with that you do lose the clean simplicity that most field watches are known for, yet you gain some visual complexity and added functionality with a unique look, while still maintaining a very easy to use design. I reviewed the original a while ago, and I love the look, but I thought the older movement held it back, and I eventually sold the one I had. But recently I picked up a version 2, and I should have a review out soon. Just as before, there are a number of colorways to pick from, but I think the beige khaki is easily my favorite, especially with the red highlights on the Defender 2. And I gotta say that for what this thing costs, it actually looks pretty good in macro. Now, I think it goes without saying that I wish this thing had sapphire, as well as a much better strap. But for under 200 bucks, I think this is still a winner. It gives you a taste of what Orient can do, with a unique look that won't easily be replaced. It's been quite a while since I had a Timex on the channel, but longtime viewers know that I have a soft spot for the brand. Timex is one of the few American brands with history and heritage behind it, and even though their watches are on the budget side of things, they can be good for those just starting out, especially when it comes to chronographs. Now everyone should have at least one chrono in their collection. And when it comes to affordable watches, quartz really is the way to go. It may not be the most exciting option out there, but it is easily the best and most reliable. Now I think every Timex chronograph uses the same movement, and they all come with Indiglo, 
so it's really a matter of style and build quality when trying to pick one out. The most budget-friendly option would be the Weekender Chronograph, as it has a simple, straight-to-the-point field watch design, and you can usually find it for around 30 to 60 bucks. Although, your best bet would probably be to go with one of the newer Waterbury Chronos, as it still retains some of the field watch characteristics, but has a much better build quality. However, if you want something a bit more unusual, you should check out the Fairfield Supernova. I reviewed one of these when they first came out, and the prices have dropped significantly since then. So these could be on their way out, but they're currently 40 bucks on Amazon. Now, one of the biggest weaknesses for Timex in general is that in order for the Indiglo system to work, the dial has to be rather flat and translucent, which means you can never have anything rather flashy or reflective. Yet the Supernova kind of fixes this, and it does it by putting a metallic sheet over a regular dial, which winds up creating a rather modern and pretty futuristic looking dress watch, and one with a sandwich dial. Now that metal sheet is perforated, which still allows the Indiglo backlight to come through, and come through rather dramatically. In some ways it's kind of gimmicky, but also futuristically cool at the same time, as well as having a rather unique look. I can't think of anything quite like this. So even if you get a better chronograph in the future, odds are it's not going to look like this. The next watch is one that I was really debating if I should include, but I eventually decided to throw it in and just see what you guys say about it. When I did the first version of this video, I purposely decided to avoid all the Express watches. While there are a lot of great budget-friendly watches there, a lot of them are homage watches, which normally I don't have a problem with. But for what I'm trying to do here, that third criteria is that the watch has to have something unique or different about it. And by definition, that should exclude most homage watches. However, I think there are some exceptions and particularly if there's a little bit of a different spin on the design. So for the fourth watch on this list, we have the Kronos 62 Mas Homage. And what makes it a little bit different is its bronze case, as well as its very vibrant emerald color scheme, at least with the colorway I got. And in full disclosure, this is a watch that the brand gave me when I did the review. Now, bronze is one of those things that you don't really know if you like until you've actually owned one. And at around 200 bucks, this gives you a great way to try one out. However, more importantly is that this is a diver that thoroughly impressed me, and especially for the price. It may be an off-brand AliExpress watch, but it's a diver that was made right. Good case, great bezel, gorgeous dial, and fantastic loom. So not only does it give you a taste of what a great diver is like, but that unusual bronze and green color scheme should give this some extra staying power in a larger collection. Last, but certainly not least, we have one of the best Citizen watches I've run across, with the EcoDrive ProMaster Tough. I haven't reviewed this one yet, but I should soon. This thing is solid with a capital S, and as of right now, they're sitting just under $300. Now, what makes this thing so interesting is the case design, as there is no case back. Rather, it's this sort of unibody construction. As far as I can tell, the movement and the dial are loaded from the top, followed by the bezel and crystal, which then seal it off. This is something that you could only pull off with a solar movement, as you shouldn't need to access the movement for at least a decade, if not two or three. Now, on top of that, you have a sapphire crystal, an extra scratch-resistant coating, and a screw-down crown which winds up making this a rather tough, rather capable, and rather thin watch with 200 meters of watch resistance. And just like that Vostok, this is sort of a dive field watch hybrid. And if that doesn't sound interesting enough, throw in some good loom, as well as a great H-Link bracelet with a milled clasp. So really hard to go wrong with this one, as this is a tough tool watch that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with most divers out there. The only real downside I've run across with this one is this itty bitty tiny date window. That, and it has a slightly longer lug to lug than I prefer at 51 millimeters. Although, since there's no protruding case back and the lugs curve down nicely, it's actually fairly comfortable on the wrist, and especially with the fully articulating bracelet. Now, every great collection needs a good grab and go quartz watch, and the Promaster Tough would be a great choice. It's a watch that can take whatever you can throw at it and still look good for years to come. And that about wraps it up for today with those five great watches. 
Now, let me know down below not only what you think about those five watches, but if you have any suggestions for watches to include in future episodes. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for joining me, and until next time.